name is Laura Harris. I'm a professor of bioinformatics with Davenport University in Michigan. Today we'll be going over how to make a heat map using Morpheus, formerly known as Gene E Programming from the Broad Institute. What you should be seeing on the screen right now is my sample heat map file that has two samples, one that's control and one that's treated, for example, with a drug at different time points, so 30 minutes through 150 minutes. You'll notice the control has a nice linear value, 0 all the way to 4, whereas the treated starts at a negative 2 value and then linearly goes up by 1 to a positive 2. So we're going to take a look at not only how to make the heat map, but also the changes that can be done to the heat map based on the data set. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go over to the Broad Institute. Now you'll notice that they no longer support Gene E, but you can download it, and I have it on my desktop. I find it very helpful. Um, but they do have this new web-based tool, Morpheus, if you don't want to do any downloads, say that you've got uh, space issues, etc. Uh, Morpheus is more than happy to help. So we can go ahead and click on that. Now we should have that Excel file ready to go and go ahead and upload it. You'll see your data within this table. Your rows are in green, your column annotations are in peach, and then any raw data in the matrix is blue. So go ahead and click OK. And you notice we have a heat map. Now you'll notice that both my control and my treated rows look the same. Why is that? Well, this is because we are looking at relative values. So if we take a look at my color key, my blue represents my row minimum and my red represents row maximum. So if we take a look again at our data, you'll notice that my lowest value is always in this 30 minute leftmost column, where my highest value is always in my 150 minute rightmost column. So therefore, my blue would be my leftmost column, my red would be my rightmost column. However, that doesn't accurately represent the data as we see it. So we can go ahead and edit those colors. So first off, we need to remove relative color scheme. As you notice, it's already gone ahead and changed the colors of your heat map. But we want to make sure that we get what's called a global value. So we want to put in the minimum most number in my matrix for both rows, along with the maximum number in my matrix for both rows. And then, if you will notice, I have now changed my heat map to give a global representation of the data in the entire matrix, not just by row. And my color key represents my lowest value in the matrix at blue, all the way up to red, my highest value in that matrix. I hope this has been helpful. If you'd like to see more videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.